news uh, for you coming from Washington concerning the, concerning rather the January the 6th Capitol riots. Just getting the sentencing for the former Proud Boys leader, Enrico Tarrio. He will serve 22 years in jail, uh, the longest sentence yet in relation to January the 6th. Let's get the very latest from James Matthews in Washington. Uh, so what did the judge say then, James? Thanks, Anna. Yeah, 22 years, as you said, the longest for the Proud Boys. There have been a few Proud Boys through the courts. On every occasion, the prosecution has been seeking longer sentences than they got. That's certainly the case this time. They wanted Enrique Tarrio put behind bars for 33 years. They've got two-thirds of that. In terms of what the judge, Timothy Kelly, had to say, he said this, responding to Tarrio's apology in today's closing statements. He made an apology, a wide-ranging apology to law enforcement officials that, with whom Proud Boys came into contact on the 6th of January, among others. But in terms of what the judge said about that, uh, he, said, he said he was glad to hear Tario's apologetic statement, but he said he found his remarks lacking. I'm quoting the judge now. He said, I don't have any indication that he's remorseful for the actual things that he's convicted of. And he called Tario's statement better than nothing. It's clear, he said, that he was a leader of a seditious conspiracy that threatened the transfer of power. And that was what this case was about, Anna. Tario and a handful of others, key organisers of the Proud Boys, around 200 who were in the vanguard of the January the 6th insurrection in an effort, allegedly, to stop the transfer of power to Donald Trump. Tarrio cited Donald Trump as his inspiration. His lawyers said that he shouldn't be scapegoated. Well, I tell you, that argument surrounding Trump and him being an inspiration to others will play out in the very same court building when Donald Trump himself returns here for a criminal trial, trial in some months' time. In the assault on democracy, he was director of operation. This is Enrique Tarrio, national chairman of the so-called Proud Boys. 300 uh, Proud Boys, they're marching eastbound. He guided the right-wing group remotely as its so-called Rally Boys stormed the capital. Tario's instructions came from a hotel room in Baltimore. We need to hold the doors of the capital. He'd been arrested in the days before and told to stay away from Washington. We lost the line. Prosecutors said Tario was part of a command chain that organized and directed a force to attack the heart of U.S. democracy. We fight like hell. Donald Trump was cited like by Tarrio's lawyers as his inspiration behind January the 6th. Some of the guys that are in there for the J6 stuff, they're going to be in there for a while. They're political prisoners. The scapegoat defense didn't spare him a conviction. He joins four other senior members of the Proud Boys now behind bars. They are sentencing a setback to leadership and influence on the far right. Today, it looks something like this. What we need to do is show other white men that they can stand up too. To not be afraid. Stick up for your self. So what does that mean? Does that mean violence? No, it doesn't mean violence. Well, we're all, doing now. This is it. all of our goals can be achieved non-violently. The most violence is on your side. Subjugation of our race. This was a demonstration in Orlando, Florida, of neo-Nazi groups at the weekend. What power? This is a small gathering on an overpass in Orlando. The question would be, does this develop into something bigger? The kind of something that this country has experienced in its recent past. In the wake of January the 6th, public demonstrations of extremism have generally been small scale. Janet Holt, a researcher in the field, believes that could change with the coming election. I think there's definitely sort of a, a buzzing energy that the right person, whether it's Trump or DeSantis or somebody else entirely, uh, you know, if they're able to pick that up, things could change really quickly. The January the 6th trials have removed extremists from the streets. Extremism itself marches on. James Matthews, Sky News in Orlando, Florida.
And James, the longest uh, case yet uh, for January the 6th for a man who, you know, didn't even try himself to break into the capital. Yes, Enrique Tarrio was not there at the capital with the hundreds of other rioters because two days prior to that, he had been arrested for burning an Antifa flag and been in possession of weapon uh, ammunition. So he'd been arrested, was told to stay out of Washington. Therefore, he was in a hotel room in nearby Baltimore watching as the insurrection unfolded. But prosecutors said that he was very much part of it, part of the organization, part of a criminal chain of command that directed around 200 so-called Proud Boys, the foot soldiers, the rally boys on that day who headed towards the capital, around 200 of them. They found vulnerable places of entry and it was Proud Boys who smashed windows and created entry points for others. The defence for Enrique Tarrio said that he was a, a misguided patriot. Tarrio himself issued an apology in his closing statement, including an apology to law enforcement on the 6th of January. The judge wasn't having any of that. He said in, in response to Tarrio's apology that he was glad to hear it, but found those remarks lacking. Judge Timothy Kelly said, I don't have any indication that he's remorseful for the actual things that he's convicted of. He sentenced him to 22 years in jail. The prosecution had requested 33. They said that Enrique Tari was guilty of a calculated act of terrorism and that there needed to be a deterrent in the sentence, a deterrent to people in future who might be happy, unhappy with future, future election results and who may be of a mind to foment political violence.